Okay, we can start. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, very warm uh, welcome, uh, uh, Dr. Vito, and uh, uh, our uh, IQSC convener, uh, Professor Andy Sanigrahi, uh, one of our uh, program officer of MSS and uh, HOD of Department of History, uh, Dr. Navanita Dotto, and uh, our HOD of Environment Science and Program Officer NSS, uh, Dr. Momita Sina, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Porcia Sarkar, one of our uh, Program Officer and uh, a Professor of Department of Hindi, HOD. So in this program, uh, first of all, very crisp, uh, very happy Christmas and very upcoming New Year's to all. Uh, and uh, in this program, actually, our principal is not uh, present at that time. So he, he cannot uh, present in this program. Uh, on behalf of that, uh, our IQSC convener, uh, Professor Andy Sanigrahi, uh, I would like to uh, inaugurate this program, uh, Professor Sanigrahi, uh, and uh, it is very pleasure that uh, this program uh, on COP26 about the climate change, and uh, all of us know that after the pandemic, the climate change is the most uh, important uh, problem uh, in our human society, except worldwide. Uh, and the uh, climate social forum is an international organization is come to uh, join with us uh, and all of the credit uh, dr vito because uh, without her uh, his help we cannot make this program and uh, we uh, we think we will make a uh, a more uh, and uh, more work and more practical work we done with uh, his organization uh, his organization actually based on Italy, but it's working internationally and different countries and different uh, resource person uh, are present uh, with his uh, organization. Uh, and I already, uh, uh, I participate different uh, webinar uh, uh, on their platform. So thank you, Dr. Vito, uh, for uh, his uh, joining this program and he, all the uh, about the COP26 and the climate change phenomena we know about uh, more intensely uh, from uh, his voice. So uh, I would like to, uh, Professor Sanigrahi, please, uh, sir, inaugurate this program. Uh, sir. Okay, Priya uh, Brother, am I audible? Right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, uh, good evening. Uh, everybody. Uh, so uh, we have with us in this uh, chilled uh, winter uh, evening with uh, Dr. Domenico Vito, uh, one of the chief fraternities of Climate Social Forum. So on behalf of Missani College Fulia and from internal quality assurance and from myself, I uh, convey my heartfelt regards and sincere good wishes to Dr. Domenico Vito, uh, who is the sole uh, I mean, uh, speaker or today's program. So welcome you sir on behalf of our colleague and internal quality as well. Uh, we have with us uh, our uh, NSS uh, coordinator, uh, Dr. Nobunita Dotto, HOD Department of History, Dr. Momita Sinha, HOD Department of Environmental Science, Dr. Purshia Sorkar, uh, HOD Department of Hindi, along with our uh, most beloved uh, Professor Peter Brother Mukhopadhyay, he is also one of the this is program officer of our college, and it's my proud privilege and honor uh, to be with in this virtual platform uh, to join with you in general, and uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to listen Dr. Dominico Vito uh, uh, today uh, in this uh, chilled winter uh, evening. So, uh, on behalf of the Stanley College, I again welcome you all. All of you have already learned that our principal is now out of patience and he is suffering some sorts of uh, health uh, issues. So that's why uh, she is not joining on this virtual platform. So uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to uh, me also uh, that uh, 
my younger fellow to be both has given me the responsibility uh, to inaugurate this uh, virtual uh, platforms and to say something uh, about our today's programs uh, all of you know that uh, uh, the 21st century is a century of i can say the three hidden dangers it is the century of the three hidden dangers uh, we have just uh, learned that in 2020 march uh, we have been suffering from covid 19 pandemic uh, followed by uh, alpha beta delta and the last uh, variant supposed to be the omicron which has already uh, infested the entire european along with america and its other adjoining areas and unfortunately it might be the same fate will be happening to occur in the asian south country that uh, maybe in the forthcoming days though we don't expect it but still we know that the magic of reality that is the science we cannot ignore but the according to me the most important issue that never to be addressed properly uh, rather it has been found a, a ray of hope that the united nations have been taking it's a very serious concern and the three important problem that i would like to say that one is the hidden danger of 21st century of the entire human civilization is the problem of climate change the second one the man-made war that means the atomic war we have already seen the devastations of the second world war and i think the war mongers have not listened the lessons from the devastations of the second world war and this is another important issue that is rarely discussed and the third one uh, that i can say uh, that is the artificial intelligence uh, because artificial intelligence are there in every corner in every part of our life and by anyhow uh, we are now supposed to be uh, victims uh, by the uh, injudicious use of this uh, most advancing and uh, uh, coming technologies so i will not say some nothing about the artificial intelligence or the uh, nuclear warfare uh, but uh, today's discussion to be mainly held on the basis of the climate change. All of you know that if we uh, observe the industrial revolution, urbanization, and random integration of concrete technologies, there we see that uh, there is a huge greed and uh, what I mean the arts to change our economic condition by anyhow. And in this dance, I can uh, report Mahatma Gandhi, what Mahatma Gandhi said, uh, that uh, art has enough to meet every man's need, but uh, art is not uh, sufficient enough to man's to fulfill every man's greed, and we are in the will of the greed. So unless and until we can check ourselves and to be uh, devoid off from these wills of greed, uh, then the entire world will try to use the maximum power, and the power ultimately may become boomerang to us uh, by means of the different types of byproducts coming out uh, via the industrial revolutions. It's a pleasure and it's a great uh, what I mean, the, uh, hope for us that United Nations has been trying his level best. And just a few, uh, just one month back, uh, that is from the last week of the October until November, uh, in Scotland, what I mean, the Glasgow, uh, the COP26 has been held uh, by the participation of the number of countries, uh, more than 197 <laughs> countries. And India did also participate in this uh, environmental climate change awareness issues and our prime minister uh, has given the consent that we will try our level based to use the renewable resources in 2030 and india will become carbon neutral in 2070 so that's a kind of the promise and if all the nations come forward particularly the china uh, who is one of the important coal users uh, america united states of america who is the largest coal users in this regard for the greenhouse emissions if they come and join their hands, uh, then I think uh, this kind of uh, global issues can be minimized and we can expect a sustainable environment that is to be our promise for 21st and 20th century and for coming uh, days. With these few words, our main speaker is uh, Dr. Domenico and she will, uh, he will speak a lot in these particular uh, issues and I think he's the right person who can rightly explain the issue of the climate change and what we immediately needed in order to uh, address the issue as well as to solve the climate change problems in the forthcoming days. So again, on behalf of myself, Internal Quality Assurance Cell and Stein College, I welcome you all and uh, our previous uh, uh, regards uh, to our honorable guest uh, of today's programs, uh, uh, that means uh, Dr. Domenico Vito, 
who have joined us uh, from Italy. Uh, and uh, I uh, welcome you so once again, sir. And it's a great pleasure uh, if we have you physically in our campus, then you can have the pleasure of this uh, heritage campus of Nishtaini College, which is not only near a college for women education, rather it is the college who rear, who cater the heritage and practices of the traditional people of the huge populations of Jungle Mahal areas of Purulia, West Bengal, India in its easternmost states. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And please stay with us. Over to Priya Broto. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you for encouraging us uh, about this uh, program. Uh, and uh, now uh, the, our technical session actually start. Uh, so uh, I, I would like to uh, Dr. Dominico Vito uh, for uh, his lecture on COP26, actually what uh, happened in COP26 and uh, what will be our roadmap according to the discussion of COP26 and uh, what are the drawbacks are present also we are uh, discussing this program uh, and uh, uh, what uh, what we we will be do what we will be our youth do uh, at our level for mitigating the climate change etc all about we know from uh, dr uh, dominico uh, and it's our pleasure it is our uh, pleasure and uh, our uh, college is also very happy for arranging this program. So, sir, uh, please uh, start uh, your technical session uh, as per you. I'm a PhD engineer that I'm following since the uh, COP21, the in uh, 2015, the uh, COP, that are the conference of parties. We will learn also in this lesson what are the conference of parties and where they are coming from. Uh, thank you again for the invitation to this first um, ed webinar series that actually is properly focused on uh, the topic of climate change. So. I will start my, my uh, lecture with the definition of climate change that is given officially by two important bodies that are the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and UNFCCC, that is the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. In these definitions, um, climate change is defined as like a change in the uh, natural uh, behavior and dynamics of uh, uh, climate, particularly addressed to the fact that the human activity has a, a central role in these changes. Actually, the climate change is something that is going beyond the natural variability of, of climate. We know, so I think that you better than me know that uh, historically, um, the climate and also the condition on Earth has been changed also into the geological area. But what is different in a, a climate change is that in a way, it, this is connected to human activity. And we will see how this, this, this has been demonstrated. I want to start with a bit of history, first of all. When we realized that uh, there was a problem of climate change, and we have to at least study this phenomenon. All started in 1972. Uh, we were like uh, after the wars and uh, like after the 
sorry, just one moment that I admit the other students that are coming. Okay. So we were like just after the wars and uh, uh, all the world were in a way like uh, reprising after the uh, World War. And uh, it was like a moment of uh, great uh, development and great, uh, uh, just one moment. And so this study was addressed to understand if we can grow into a finite world, even though we were like using a region that was exponential. And this study was committed by the Club of Rome to the scientists of uh, MIT. Uh, the study uh, was uh, like uh, based on six variables that are the one that are, you can see here in the sterilization, food production, consumption, and instrument. And the goal probably was to um, demonstrate if it was possible to grow at uh, the, the higher rate that uh, we were uh, growing in an infinite world. And the results of this uh, work and this study was that uh, actually uh, there were no possibility to sustain uh, such a growth. And uh, uh, in a turning point uh, around the estimated to 2030, there will be collapse if all the like uh, uh, variables were setting at the, in a grow of the, at the current rate. Uh, so it was important to take some measures. And after these studies, uh, the United Nations decided to organize the first uh, conferences uh, to understand the state of the planet and uh, to gather all the states together uh, in order to uh, like mobilize and address the decision. Uh, one of the first was the Stockholm Conference in 1978, where all different NGOs were like invited to also understand discuss about uh, what to do and what not to do on, uh, on, uh, on this issue of, uh, of protection of planet. Here, the UNEP, the UN uh, Environmental Protection Agency of uh, United Nations was born. And uh, from that, all the process that uh, now we were gonna discuss uh, has been arised. Was important this conference also because uh, there were important declarations like the Declaration of United Nations Conference on Human Environment and all the treaties that were the base also to construct the other treaties that are related to climate change. After other conferences like uh, the Geneva one and the Villa one. Um, that were held in uh, 1979 and 1985, uh, the CC was born. So the first of uh, uh, the two bodies that we uh, see on the first slide, slide. What is the IPCC? Is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change? Is a uh, awesome scientist that uh, is working to study and to monitor the climate change itself. Uh, it was born by the joint work, joint work of World Medical Meteorological uh, Organization and properly UNEP. And the role of this body is to produce reports and report scientific knowledge about the status of climate change. So here is the structure of the IPCC that has uh, some working groups. Working groups that are uh, like dedicated to uh, some aspect of climate change. So the physical basis, the impact, the mitigation uh, and adaptation, and also a task force to monitor what it's called the green gas inventories, greenhouse gas inventories. So practically the, the record of all the emissions that all the states are uh, having uh, regarding the uh, greenhouse gases. So just to clarify two words that I mentioned, adaptation and mitigation. With adaptation and mitigation, we intend to action that we can address to like uh, uh, face climate change. Mitigation means reduce the causes and uh, the, 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 the emissions that uh, are uh, generating climate change itself. We will see uh, which is the physical phenomenon behind. Indeed, adaptation is in a way, the way to adapt to a phenomenon that is still going on. 
we are all aware now that uh, climate change is uh, something that is running and we cannot avoid the effect of the current state. After this declaration, and another important declaration was uh, set that there was the declaration on our common future. Our common future was very important because for the first time, um, uh, assessed the concept of sustainable development. Uh, we were like talking that uh, we, with the uh, study that was called limit of growth, we understand that was impossible and unsustainable growth and unsustainable development. So what was a sustainable development indeed? A sustainable development is a development that satisfies the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of the future generation to satisfy their own. And in this first definition, there, uh, there is like a, uh, first, a glance of the role of the youth uh, for, for example, uh, addressing sustainable development and climate change. Then, after this meeting, uh, there was another important moment inside the histories of the Conference of Parties. That was properly the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. Uh, this was, we can say, the first Conference of Party with uh, with the goal of organizing the world um, um, like action of UN in order to face climate change. In this year was recognized and officially declared the sustainable development uh, definition and other important achievement has been uh, like uh, outcome from this from this conference. One was the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. Uh, the other one was Agenda 21, that was assessing the role of uh, uh, like uh, local uh, governments and sub-national governments in tackling the sustainable development, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the forest principles, and of course, very, very important, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Let's see what is the UN Framework Convention of climate change, on climate change. As I said, on June 12, in 1992, 154 nations signed uh, the UNFCCC, so the UN Framework Convention of Climate Change. This was like a non-binding uh, agreement, a non-binding target to that, first of all, recognizes the role of human communities uh, in the changing climate, uh, and also the understanding that uh, all the human communities uh, were together multilaterally to find solution and to address action to prevent and to reduce climate change. In 1990, in fact, the IPCC, the body that I mentioned before, uh, made its first report in which, like, was, like, in a way assessed that uh, was possible, but not till certain that uh, human activities uh, were affecting climate change. Then in another report, we will see that uh, IPCC confirmed that uh, the climate change was in a way connected to human activities. So this is like a brief of data about the uh, first uh, uh, like uh, set of the UNFCCC. Um, the idea was to like uh, address at least the 55% of the global emitter all around the world. And uh, it was like based by um, 12 articles that in a way define the structure and the framework as I say, the framework convention of all the resolution that were uh, dealing climate change at the international level. Uh, so the article first, uh, the first article is definition, then the second article is objective, principle, and commitments, and so on. We can say that this uh, appointment, 1992, was in a way like the milestone, the base stone for all the other conference of parties. This is the article two um, that actually defined the objectives. As I say, the objective is to like uh, uh, gather all the nation of the world to face the climate change. 
to do something that uh, can help to reduce, mitigate, and adapt to climate change. So which were the principles that are stated in Article 2? The principles are uh, many that are also the base of the current resolution that are relying the UNFCCC. C. First of all, the common but differentiated responsibility and respective capabilities. What, that, that, what does it mean? That the uh, UNFCCC recognize that uh, climate change is a common problem of all the state because the emissions that are actually the cause of the um, rising temperature and then all of the side effect of climate change are transboundary. So they are doing, the, they are damaging across the nation. And so the problem was common. But of course, it was important also to understand that also because different states have started industrialization, for example, in different times, and there are like states that were industrialized before, the responsibilities are differentiated. And indeed also the capabilities are differentiated because uh, uh, also uh, um, talking about economical structure that are states that are more capable to address climate change and others that need maybe some support. And in a vision of a common problem, because the, the problem is of all, we need to understand also the different capabilities and uh, responsibilities on, on this. The principle of equity, that is like, of course, the, the, the consideration to stay equal into the resolution of the problem, equal that does not mean uh, like the same for each but equal standing properly on the principle of common and, uh, and differentiated responsibility. Everyone can uh, contribute standing also to the, like, uh, their condition. Promotion of sustainable development. So we uh, um, faced it before. Sustainable development uh, was like a key principle of this, um, of this convention properly because the damages that we are now causing are then an effect for the uh, generation also that are upcoming. And of course, the needing consideration of, part of, uh, of the needs of, part of vulnerable countries. And another important principle, and then I'll go to the uh, next slide, that the lack of scientific knowledge uh, should not be used as a way to avoid action. This is important on two sides. First of all, um, this relies also on the precaution principle. Even we, if we are not aware of uh, if an action or like uh, uh, an industrial activity or whatever, um, if we don't know the effects of such activity, it's important to do not do that, okay? And so we cannot justify, for example, the pollution of a river, the pollution of the atmosphere, just because we don't know the real effects. And this is the precaution principle. So we have to avoid the action that we don't know the effects that they have. On the same way, if we know that an action can certainly contribute, for, for example, on the reduction of climate change, we cannot justify the avoidance of action just because there is a lack of scientific knowledge. Because we have, as I said before, we have to act in prevention. So we have to act uh, in, uh, like, uh, we, in the space of uh, have manageable actions. So I hear this slide a little bit go behind on, uh, on what I said. Equity means also intergenerational equity. Uh, intergenerational equity is a concept that uh, we, can, we will see is also inserted into Paris Agreement, but uh, mm, uh, in a way uh, defines the equity among different generations. So just not the, the peer generation, so just not the current generation, but also equity among different generations. And this is very connected, as I said, on the concept of sustainable development. We have to leave the world in a better state 
than we uh, like found because other generation are coming and other generation have the right to live in the same or even better environment than us. So the convention also defines, uh, uh, this is like a, just a technical uh, definition, the, uh, the parties in two, um, in two groups. Uh, we can say the parties of Annex 1, the ones that are historically uh, more uh, uh, like uh, advanced in, in, in industrialization, at least started before in, uh, in a way in eating, and the Annex 2, that uh, non-Annex or Annex 2, that are the ones that uh, maybe are uh, economy transitions and economy that started in a, in, like a, uh, after time, into the industrialization. So this is the structure in a way of the convention. So once the convention is set, uh, it also creates the environment for the discussions and for the uh, further treaty that we will see uh, have been taken during the uh, difference conference of parties. And how is organized this structure? Uh, this structure is organized in different assemblies. There is the main one, that is the conference of parties in which all the delegates of states are gathering to take the relevant decision. There is the secretariat that is uh, in a way the, uh, the group of uh, facilitators and the group of uh, all the staff of UN that in a way uh, facilitate and organize all the meetings and so on. And then there are uh, what we call the uh, substary bodies. So bodies that are in support of the main assembly. Uh, there are like the, the, the substary bodies for a particular agreement, for example, the one uh, that is serving the Kyoto Protocol, that is one of the resolution came uh, into the UNFCCC schema but also like a, a special uh, um, a substary bodies for Paris Agreement. And two very important uh, into this structure are the substa or substary bodies for scientific and technological advice. Then a way that in a way received the scientific and all the knowledge needed to decision maker to take relevant decision regarding climate change. On the other side, there is the substary bodies for implementation. So when the resolution are came, and the strategic uh, actions and all the implementation action are decided properly into this body. So the UNFCCC is a very inclusive environment. And uh, as we recognize that uh, the problem is common, uh, it's important also to include into the process uh, what we call the non-party stakeholders or non-state uh, actors. Uh, and these are gathered into uh, what we call the uh, constituencies. Constituencies are representative bodies of certain parts of the civil society. That could be youths, that could be women, that could be the research in academia, that are farmers and so on. These are also included into the process of negotiation, of course, with different uh, degrees of, uh, of, uh, of like, uh, power of decision because of course the final decision then come to the state but these are like uh, uh, also included into the negotiation and so on and one important probably talking about youth is Yango. Yango is the constituencies of you the constituency of you I also been part of Yango and has been like a great experience that uh, uh, also I suggest to uh, all, all my uh, like uh, friends and colleagues that are young today uh, because even though uh, there is just a constituency, they can make a great, great impact. So in this slide, uh, there, is, there are the obligations that are given to the party. Of course, uh, as I said, the, the APCC is organizing a national invent inventory of greenhouse gases. And uh, through the convention, all the states are uh, asked to prepare a national inventory to formulate also resolution and national climate policies. These are all the base like obligation that the states have uh, standing to the UNFCCC. But let's go a little bit beyond and let's like uh, see 
uh, how this sto the story, because it's a real story uh, of the conference of parties, has been since 1992 till today that uh, we had the uh, COP in Glasgow, that of course was not in 2020, but in 2021 because of the pandemic. In this like chronogram, you can see uh, like the different achievement also that uh, have been reached uh, during the, uh, the years into the different conference of parties. And let's see a little bit what happened during the, uh, during the, the history. So one very step that I want to focus on is the Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto Protocol was the first, first one uh, uh, international resolution that came out from UNFCCC uh, that uh, uh, had the goal to reduce the emission uh, of a certain percentage. Here it's stated by 5.2% uh, by year. Uh, and uh, um, it started in 2050, in 2005. I have to say that the Kyoto Protocol, in a way, is still active even though it will be replaced completely by the Paris Agreement during the next year, properly standing to the resolution that have come into COP26. But uh, the, the thing that uh, I want to highlight is that uh, this was the first one global resolution for reduced emission. Surely the Kyoto Protocol was the first one, but uh, not the best one, we can say. In fact, uh, different uh, like the, the Kyoto Protocol was setting up the so-called uh, emission uh, market or carbon trading. That was uh, a first attempt to use the market to uh, reduce the emission. So basically, through the Kyoto, -Kyoto Protocol, um, the states could like uh, exchange quotes of uh, emission reduction to demonstrate that they were into the goal set by the Kyoto Protocol itself. This system during the, the years uh, has been demonstrated to do not be effective uh, on a physical way. Even though, of course, the market was running, uh, finally we had that the uh, global emission have not reduced by 5% five, uh, 5 by year, but they are were augmenting indeed by 50%. And so was ineffective. It was important to find another way to, um, to tackle climate change. And different uh, tempt tentative have been done during the history. One of the most famous was the COP15 in Copenhagen. Uh, there was like a first uh, like a struggle to, or like in a way, improve the uh, Kyoto Protocol and go to another agreement more, uh, more relevant and more uh, effective. Copenhagen was not good. Copenhagen is a, uh, like an example on how sometimes international negotiation fail also. And this was like quite a failure, of course. Uh, some things uh, has been come from this resolution, but no, not uh, any, uh, not any uh, like agreement that was uh, better than the Kyoto Protocol. In the meanwhile, as I said, the, the scientists were studying and monitoring the the, um, the climate change and how they are doing that. Actually, the the scientists are monitoring the. Um, First of all, the, the, the increase of temperature that is going into the atmosphere. And this is increase of temperature, just to go a little bit on the physical basis, is due to the fact that uh, some gases that are called greenhouse gases are, uh, are the cause of the so-called um, um, greenhouse, greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect in a way, in and trap the the, the 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 heat that is coming to the sun from the sun into the atmosphere doesn't let it go after into the space, and this like uh, uh, global warming, in a way, like shatter in a way and shock the the natural equilibrium that that is persisting into the atmosphere and is also the, uh, the the reason of all the seasonality and all the uh, normal condition of climate. 
you have to imagine like when uh, the, the water is heating, when you are putting more heat into the water, the water is becoming to boil and the, the conditions are becoming to be more chaotic you know, as, as I put uh, heat into the water. And similarly is happening into the atmosphere. If I put too much heat into the atmosphere, then the atmosphere is becoming to be chaotic and the seasonalities and all the rhythms that are naturally uh, pertaining the normal climate are in a way uh, disrupted. And uh, the chaotic behavior is, a, is um, like reflecting into extreme events, floods, desertification, and so on. And so the scientists during their study uh, are also making scenarios on how could go the uh, situation if the rising temperature are like increasing and if we, if we are doing nothing. And in their report, in their uh, uh, full report, they properly say that if we do not nothing, uh, the global uh, warming will uh, rise to 4.5 or 4.8 degrees. And this led to uh, like uh, uncontrollable effect. To control, we need to do something. And we have to do some, something like policies. And uh, if you are like doing policies uh, on, uh, on the current state, so like just pledging, for example, on the Kyoto Protocol, okay, we decrease uh, the probability to have a certain temperature at uh, uh, 2010, uh, um, 2100, that is actually the deadline in which the scientists are studying. But these policies are not sufficient because we have to stay in a more strict, like, their shoulder of global warming that we will see is 1.5 degrees. And probably here it comes the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement was signed in uh, 2015 in Paris properly. And uh, the Paris Agreement was recognizing that the limit for the global warming need to be set at 1.5 or the, the, the wording at the first time was below two and 1.5. And then we will come on that. One, uh, below two, 1.5 to uh, 200 and uh, 2100, okay. And so the Paris Agreement was recognizing this threshold and was inviting the states to promote and propose plans to reduce emission and to adapt in order to stay into this threshold, into this limit of 1.5 degrees. How it's working basically, the Paris Agreement, that is also the current history, because the resolution of COP26 are properly pertaining the Paris Agreement, is working with the, the so-called NDCs or National Determined Contributions. NDCs are country efforts that are made to reduce the national emission and to adapt to the impact of climate change. Just to like let explain in a also uh, like graphic way, you have to imagine that uh, the scientists, the experts, uh, have set the limit. That could be, for example, the limit for let fly a balloon. No? The limit could be like uh, 120 kilos. 120 kilos is like our 1.5 degrees. And so the experts are saying to the states, look, you can do whatever you want. You can uh, like uh, talk with your friend. And if you are more thin and your friend is a little bit fat, you can agree maybe in a lost weight or gain weight on your standing. But you have to be aware that if you want to let fly the balloon, you have to reach the 1.5 degrees, the uh, 120 kilos. Okay. And this is the very core of Paris Agreement because all the agreements of the, and all the NDCs are presented multilaterally. So all the states need to be like aware of all the other states are doing. This is properly the concept of multilateralism. And so the NDCs are these like uh, pledges that the states are like putting uh, onto the Paris Agreement uh, to demonstrate that they are doing something in, uh, in order to reduce the emission and to adapt to climate change. 
And uh, these pledges are like updated and uh, monitored each five years. These years, well, this year was very important because it uh, uh, was like the first revision of the NDCs. The first NDCs were presented, of course, uh, in Paris in 2015 when the Paris Agreement was signed. And uh, now five years has been passed. And so the NDCs need to be revisioned. And this COP, the COP of Glasgow, was very important properly because of this. So the Paris Agreement also recognized several other elements that uh, in a way uh, make this uh, agreement very flexible and very like, uh, in a way, a step beyond the Kyoto Protocol. For example, it assessed the transparency framework. So the, a framework that uh, wants to really count the reduction emission, not just uh, a market that uh, finally go into some uh, unpredictable uh, dynamics or that finally doesn't cause a real reduction of the emissions. Uh, the Paris Agreement wants to assess properly a transparency framework to clearly count uh, which are the reduction of emission that are coming from the action of the states. And also the Paris Agreement uh, make some uh, efforts and provides some efforts uh, in an economical way. Uh, the Kyoto Protocol was not like this. The Kyoto Protocol was uh, just uh, like an agreement between the states for set up a market in a way. We can explain in synthesis like this. But no funding, no, we can say money was put for addressing climate change. Paris Agreement indeed it wants to create a new market of emissions, as we can see here, that in a way was an improvement of the Kyoto Protocol, but also wants to create funds, green climate fund and adaptation fund. These funds are useful to properly finance project, finance action uh, to mitigate, so to reduce the emission and to adapt, so to cope with the uh, like, uh, provisional damages that uh, uh, the climate change could run. And so these funds are like, uh, of course, uh, very controlled because uh, uh, there is a board for uh, decide which projects need to be addressed and which not. So uh, is a way properly to monitor and to like assess uh, with the concrete action, uh, the, uh, the fight of climate change. And during the COP, several things have happened. I will just mention this, uh, uh, this slide. Uh, I don't want to go too much on that, but uh, was important uh, this point uh, also to understand the role of indigenous knowledge into the uh, COP process into uh, UNFCCC. During the COP23 in, uh, that was uh, hosted by the Fiji, but physically uh, done in Bonn uh, for uh, uh, logistic uh, reason. Uh, the, the UNFCCC recognized a uh, uh, traditional methodology of negotiate that was pertaining properly the city, the, the Fiji, as a uh, like official way to negotiate, uh, official methodology of negotiation. This methodology is called Talanoa Dialogue and is a facilitative process to put uh, all the actor and all the like stakeholder into a peer environment, into like a, a place where they can also uh, say their problem or say their concern. But finally, the, the solution is to solve the common problem based on three questions that are where we are, where do we want to go, and how do we get there? And on these three questions, we have to like address the problem. We, have, we can assess the state of art with the first question, where we are. We can define our goal and our objectives, where, where would we want to go? And we can define also our methods and strategy in how do we get there. And so, as I say, different COPs has made the different steps, uh, also like uh, other resolutions that were regarding education, uh, were regarding finance, uh, all uh, the, the climate change in a way activate uh, really a, a radical change of the way to shape the society. And then we are coming to uh, the 
the, the days of, uh, of now, so the COP26. The COP26 was held in Glasgow. Uh, this COP was like co-hosted by UK and also Italy. Italy was like the, the hoster of the pre-COP, that are the pre-negotiations of COP26. So first of all, you have to imagine that uh, the, the COP are not just the moment of the COP. And then I'm going to close. Uh, but also, for example, that all the, the, the negotiations that are running during the world here. And one of these is the pre-COP. And this year, the pre-COP was hosted by Italy that also hosted a very important moment for the youth. That is uh, Youth for Climate. In a way, the, a sort of uh, resolution made by youth that the policymaker need to listen because uh, the youths are now are very active and also they want to find solution. What was the goal of this COP26? The goal was uh, to finalize the Paris Agreement. Uh, the Paris Agreement was uh, signed in 2015, but uh, it was just an agreement. And there were like the need sort of rule book, the, the set of instruction to make it active and to make it operationalized. This is a word. And uh, particularly some articles like Article 6 of Paris Agreement that was defining a new market of emission beyond the Kyoto Protocol uh, needed to be like defined and concluded. And this was the goal of the COP26. Then we will need to find the, the, the finance beyond the, the action of Paris Agreement. We talked about the funds before, no? Uh, and these funds will need to be like financing and we need to find the money on that. And the money was estimated to be $1 trillion by year uh, to like be addressed to uh, the, the funds provided by the Paris Agreement. And also another part of the, 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 the money uh, need to be addressed to the so-called loss and damage. You have to imagine that several countries, also India, but also other countries are sometimes affected, just affected by the climate change damages. And who is gonna pay in a way the damages that are caused by the climate change? We need to define some loss and damage. So some funds or something, some actions that can help the communities that are just affected by climate change. And then of course, mitigation, as I said, with the pledges of the new NDCs and also inclusive actions how the civil society can address and can contribute to the, to the climate change uh, uh, like um, uh, fight and so on. You have to imagine that the, the climate change is not just a matter of the states, but civil society, industries, citizens can do a lot. And it's important to recognize these elements. How is gone? These are like the, the scorecards on uh, the final result of this uh, COP26. Uh, so when they asked me how the COP was gone, uh, I cannot say neither it has been a success, neither it has been a failure. I don't want to use these words because it doesn't describe so much the very situation. And so some achievement has been reached. For example, uh, fossil fuels are gradually going away on the wording of the agreement itself. Uh, the states have like uh, agreed on a reduct by 45% by 2030 the global emission. This is a good goal. Just imagine that, for example, uh, Europe that wants to be uh, uh, one of the leader on that uh, assessed that 30%. So we step uh, with a higher ambition, and it's important. Negotiation uh, finally, uh, um, as I said, run into a uh, new market, a new Article 6 that was like a, a very uh, stacking point, and we, in a way, overcome that. And uh, another important thing for agriculture, uh, we came out with a, a methane pledge. So to reduce the emission of methane by 30% by 2030. And it is very important because uh, agriculture is uh, one of the main emitter into, for example, methane, that is one of the uh, most damaging greenhouse gases. And also, there were also bilateral agreements between states. 
one that has been uh, very claimed by the newspaper has been well, the one with China and US, but not only. Other ones have been come from, uh, from the cotton disease. What are the losses in the other side? Uh, uh, rich countries that not make a real pledge on finance. We doesn't cover. Uh, we didn't cover the the co completely the one trillion dollar. We are still need to negotiate at least since the next COP for fully funding the uh, the, the funds provided by Paris Agreement. The carbon trading market, yes, new market is now active, but with some loopholes that we need to face. Most vulnerable countries uh, doesn't cope with the uh, loss and damage. So there, uh, negotiation on loss and damage and adaptation has been uh, advanced. So uh, networks also for cooperation between states uh, regarding uh, like the prevention and uh, like uh, support on the climate change effect uh, are active, but no clear finance on that. Poor and natural play. I, I told about NDCs. So, uh, and also the, the trajectory that the study that the scientists are doing to, like, uh, in a way, um, understand uh, how the pledges are contributing to the 1.5. Through the current NDCs, uh, we are not yet uh, to be on the trajectory of uh, 1.5 degrees uh, by uh, 2100. We need to work still. We need to rise the ambition because here we are at 2.4 degrees. And then the final resolution on the words of calling have been like a little bit uh, watered down. Uh, the, the call um, action need to be a little bit studied and the, there, is need, there is the need of cooperation uh, among states to help all the countries uh, to phase out completely by call about 2050. So these are the, the main losses, but as I said, not a full answer says as sometimes claimed, but several important things has been reached. Several important things also outside the main agreement, because uh, beside the, like uh, all the, like a resolution inside the UNFCCC and inside the Paris Agreement, some bilateral agreement or also a civil society agreement has been signed from this scope. The most important are the uh, Beyond the Oil and Gas Alliance uh, that was launched by 11 nations to submit the national government to go beyond oil and gas. Or the Glasgow Breakthroughs that are commitments from the industries, especially five sectors of industries that are power, road and transport, steel, hydrogen and agriculture, to go and to race to zero emission by 2050. And these are very important because industry is one of the main sector that are, is producing emission. And also I will cite here, is not cited here, but uh, uh, the foreign forest and land use agreement that uh, is also like uh, that was coming from the World Reader Summit in order to like uh, um, propose and uh, also support financially action for reforestation and soil preservation. And so also cities, okay, this slide is a, uh, in Italian, but just to, uh, to say that also cities uh, can do uh, very, very important things. The cities and the C40 Alliance and also the, the cities around the world can do a lot. And just to conclude, we uh, do not have to forget the civil society because the civil society is uh, the trigger, is like the, the real energy that uh, uh, this negotiation has been uh, uh, has been faced. Also, the, the, the president of COP26, Alok Sharma, has uh, defined the, the pressure that were coming from the youths and from the civil society, from the association, the real energy that uh, higher the ambitions of the, this negotiation. And also Patricia Spinoza, uh, executive director of uh, UNFCCC, has clearly thanked, has clearly like, uh, um, like um, recognized the role of, uh, uh, of civil society.
just concluding on uh, on this uh, on this point, uh, the same Patricia Spinoza has said that the COP26 has been a bridge, a bridge between uh, just words, just blah blah blah, as Greta is saying, to more concrete and measurable action. But this bridge needs to be crossed because the ambition is still a little bit low, but we can do. And just to conclude for, uh, and here you can find some of our contact, uh, I, I want to cite uh, the, one of the um, very important citation to me that were coming from Al Gore, the vice president from, uh, of the uh, US during the uh, Clinton uh, um, mandate and also Nobel Prize and also very uh, active climate leader and founder of the Climate Reality Project. We have to understand that even though the situation is critical, uh, we do not to look like use ho lose hope because uh, for the one that prefer the desperation to hope, it's important to say to them that hope is a renewable energy and we do not have to let us down. Thank you very much for the attention. And I will stop sharing. And I will be available for questions. Yeah. I mean, may I tell you, Bolbo, tomorrow, if you have any questions, then you can ask me. Ah, Jara, also, may I tell our students that you have any questions, then you can ask me. Bangla, then you can ask me. I will tell you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. कारों किचु क्वेश्चन था क्ले कारो तो मतलब इग्लो सब्जेक्टेड मुद्दे ही पढ़े आ बांग्लाते कारो आमी शहर के बोले तो वो इंग्लिश है बोलो आ वेल सर फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स एक्चुअली दे हैव little bit uh, <laughs> uh, questionnaire is but uh, cannot say uh, but uh, my uh, one of my question is that uh, in the uh, COP26 uh, what uh, uh, will be uh, do with the students or youth what are the opportunities for uh, their action so please uh, light on yes Thank you, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I want to reprise a little bit some talks that I heard uh, from, uh, first of all, I, I want to cite uh, uh, Mr. Barack Obama that uh, uh, was one of the main uh, promoter of the Paris Agreement uh, that uh, was like invited as a honorable guest to this uh, call. And he said uh, something very important. He said, uh, uh, both to the decision maker and both to the youth, he was addressing the, the two categories and was saying to the decision maker, to the one of the, we can say, older generation, we have, you have to listen to the students, you have to listen to the youths because uh, they understand the problem. They are, they have also solution, they are innovative. They can very found new ways that uh, we maybe we cannot uh, uh, like see so clearly as they do. And on the other side, uh, he was uh, like addressing to the youths uh, to say, stay ambitious, stay innovative, stay in a way uh, with a clear mind on resolve this problem. But don't be just in opposition. Be participating to this consensus. Be trying to propose. Be trying to like find the solution in your uh, local uh, municipality, in your uh, local uh, environment, and so on. Because uh, only if you speak out, only if you like uh, give voice also to your solution, then we all can find a global solution. And so my invitation to all the uh, and the students is uh, to like uh, be creative and be also curious also on the thing that they say one of the mission of this uh, uh, type of uh, of uh, lesson and so on uh, is also to make you curious and make you a more like uh, really hungry of knowledge on the topic and so on because then you have to find also some solution
in your local villages, in your local country, and so on. And don't really, uh, don't be in a way shy. Also here, if you have a question, don't be shy, because it's important. It's your future, and uh, you can have also an active role of that. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, they understand about their duty and responsibilities uh, as a youth or uh, as a student. Uh, but one thing is, uh, our student also very interested in any social work, uh, whatever it is, education uh, or any environmental protection program or cleanliness program, etc. They are they do some projects also in college campus and in our town also. A very small city so uh, uh, our co students are very uh, much uh, interested in this job and work uh, so if we uh, work with you and your organization with our college and our youth so it is uh, it will be our uh, good fortune again uh, for uh, this webinar I'm very uh, very much uh, happy we our college uh, our college faculty members and students and that beautiful presentation and about the climate change from the history to the uh, present cop 26 uh, all we know about the details and uh, thank you sir thank you very much and uh, uh, we hope uh, that we meet again with our college uh, and uh, if possible, I requesting you on behalf of our college, please make any uh, move uh, and uh, with our college so we can uh, work intensely more and more detailed work we can do. Not only the virtual uh, platform, but also in practical also. And uh, in our next program, if we organized any program, uh, then uh, of course, I uh, invite you and please join uh, so one of our uh, one of our student have a question so nikita if you have any question you can ask her unmute your mic and ask her nikita yes sir yes you ask your question Hi sir, I am Nikita. I have a question sir. How can a climate change agenda be institutionalization within a local government system? Okay, I, I um, don't, uh, if you can repeat please because the audio was... Uh... Okay sir, how can a climate change agenda be institutionalization within a local government okay. system? Okay, okay. So, there are several ways uh, in which a climate agenda can be inserted, for example, on a local government. You have to, um, I, I, I give you an example of what's uh, what happening here, for example, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, since uh, at least uh, three years, uh, we, each municipality by law, by national law, need to like prepare a national, a national mitigation, no, a local mitigation and adaptation plan that uh, have some measures for uh, uh, make the city more sustainable. And which could be this type of manager, no measure? For example, uh, renovate the building into a, a more efficient and more like a sustainable uh, way of energy supply. So. Uh, not not just using fossil fuel, for example, for for uh, uh, like uh, produce heat and to provide energy, but for example, to use renewable. And all this can be also done at the local level. Uh, for example, having some systems that in a way predict the the effects of extreme events, and in order to reduce the damage on uh, on what's happening when I don't know a big storm is happening and so on. Uh, so to provide the city with uh, uh, an adaptation, an, an early warning system. Or for example, uh, to replant the, the land. Uh, one, one friend of mine, one, co one colleague says that the best technology to uh, like uh, reduce and to mitigate and reduce the emission are trees. 
So we can think about many technologies, but the trees are the best one that we can have. And so, for example, uh, replant the trees are uh, like, uh, or decide the certain area of the city or the town and so on is dedicated to tree planting is one measure that a local level can do. But also, for example, a mobility uh, to provide more ways to like a sustainable mobility, not just by car or not just by uh, means that uh, are using fossil fuels. This is a way that also the local level can do this type of action. I don't know if I responded to your question. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so plantation is the another measure, and uh, sir, I, I discussed uh, it uh, before with you also in your uh, webinar also. So, uh, I think uh, students are very getting very more information from this, and uh, we have different types of ideas also, but. Uh, uh, in India, actually, there is a little bit lack of funding, actually. So no, the local governments also, uh, they have interest, but uh, a lack of uh, money or lack of funding is uh, making barriers on that. But uh, we can do uh, at our basic level. And <coughs> we can introduce our... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So uh, lastly, we, uh, we can conclude our program. And uh, again, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Domenico Vito. And our principal, madam, is not present here. But uh, again, without her uh, permission, without her interest, we cannot make this. Uh, our uh, convener of IQSC, uh, Professor Andy Sarnigrahi, thank you very much. Our uh, uh, senior uh, program officer of NSS, Dr. Navanita Dotto, is also present here. So thank you very much, madam. Uh, Momita, Dr. Momita Sinha and Dr. Porcia Sarkar is also present here. So thank you. And uh, thank you all my students, because without your uh, presence and without your uh, contribution, we cannot make this webinar successfully. And I hope uh, if sir uh, pursued that uh, uh, we can make offline program also after the over in the pan pandemic situation mm, and uh, mm, I, I invite you sir uh, in our college uh, after the pandemic situation mm, uh, and uh, yeah and I hope uh, uh, we will uh, make uh, other webinar also with your organization with your help sure. uh, sir. Uh, and uh, yeah sir and uh, thank you Thank you again, all of you. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we want to make a another webinar on climate history, actually, okay. if possible, sir, uh, on the history of how the dynasty, how the Incas or how the Mayas dynasty or how uh, the Mesopotamian uh, civilization are lost due to the climate change effects. Like in India, Harappa Mahanjadoro civilization also lost because of the climate change effects. So that kind of, if any historical perspective of climate change we, uh, we will do, then uh, for our history department is uh, a very uh, important and interesting. So I'm requesting you on behalf of uh, here, the HOD of uh, Department of History is present, Dr. Navanita Dotto. So if any uh, type of this webinar we can make in uh, okay. January, on the historical perspective of climate change, what are the uh, effect of climate change on our uh, old civilization, then it will be better. So thank you, sir. So officially, uh, I close this house. So thank you again, all. Thank you. Thank Dhamu. you to you all. And uh, thank you very much also for uh, this great opportunity. Also to thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. So I will close the call now. Yes, 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 sir. Bye yes, sir, all. of course. Bye.